Lexi, so as a Utah Bothell student, being that that Vietnamese man was stabbed in the heart the other day, and and this is right on campus. This is like a block from where yeah. you go to school when you're in person. How are you mm -hmm. feeling? Honestly, Jolene, when I heard the news, I immediately broke down in tears. And this is just because it hits really close to where I live. And knowing that a white UW student stabbed this Vietnamese man was just so devastating. And the fact that it wasn't uh, in the news a lot says a lot about our state. And as you said earlier, there's even more cases of Asian hate crimes being reported from Seattle because Seattle kind of has this reputation of apparently having more uh, murder cases. But this case is just as significant just because um, there's definitely not a lot of cases reported in Bothell concerning murders, especially about a Vietnamese man just walking out in the street. And this man was 29. And this is, and I immediately after when I heard the news, I called my mom and I talked to her about it. And we were talking all about it's, it's literally, it's systematic racism, it's white supremacy. Um, and always in the news, it's most of the time a, a young white man, which is really like concerning to me. And that says a lot about America itself and how white supremacy has been, you know, deeply embedded um, in our society. So um, how did you hear overall, about it? How did you hear about it first? Of all, because I heard about it through um, one, uh, a white guy on my network. And I was like, mm -hmm. glad that he posted it because I hadn't heard of it. And this happened, you know, I, mm -hmm. I heard about it yesterday and it happened on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then on that thread, he, he says, normally I don't post about anything, but you know, fluffy bunnies, but we have to talk about mm -hmm. this. And I was like, oh my gosh, we've got a convert. He realizes that we need to talk about it. And then there are a few people on that thread. And then I added more to the story and then nothing. So mm -hmm. how did you hear yeah. about it? So our, uh, our Uta Bothell, I think Chancellor emailed all of the students, you know, and that's where I heard the news. And I, it's funny because usually I would hear about these cases where online breaking news, blah, 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 this murder happened, but it was in a very, uh, direct email. So, um, when I read that, it said that he was taken into custody, but apparently the, uh, police, Officers, they didn't confirm it as a legitimate case, which is really unfortunate. Um, yeah. So how, um, I mean, do, do you ever go over to the other side? That's like a block on the other side of the campus. Do you ever frequent mm -hmm. like where that villa, where that condo is? Cause there's the, you know, rest Starbucks and stuff there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of my friends, Lindsay, she used to live there in an, yeah. and I would walk over there and hang out with her. And when I heard it happen near Birdsley, I was like, wow, only a few blocks away from the campus that I attend. And that is just scary itself because they announced that we are allowed to go back in fall court in person. And another thing I was talking about with my mom is, do I really want to go back to school? Because in the email, it said there's apparently other 10 other suspects or perpetrators that are associated with this UW student um, who was thinking in a such a racist way. And so if I'm like, if there's, if, if I go back and if there's other students being put at risk, especially of an Asian race, that's really concerning. So, so can you tell us more about the 10, like what, what, what was the conversation about some other or. Um, it was super vague, super, okay. super vague. All they said in the email was, oh, just 10 perpetrators or 10 suspects that were associated with, and the student's name, by the way, is Ian Williams. So, Ian Williams. Yeah. So, so my concern here, I, I have many concerns, but mm -hmm. I went to the murder scene yesterday because I play soccer like four minutes away from there. So I just stopped by. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people think that it's crazy people. You know, it's maybe low income, mental illness, crazy people. And here's just mm -hmm. a, a, a white student who lives in the same area. And it's two thousand. it's about, two, I looked it up. It's like $2,000. Mm -hmm. 
um, you know, for one bedroom there and lives in the same dorm. I mean, same, um, condo as the victim, as the Vietnamese guy. And it's like, it's a nice place. This is like white picket fence, but modern suburb. Yeah, yeah. And, um, mm-hmm. it's disturbing. And I don't, I don't, my network, I don't think has said anything about it. No, no. There's one Asian who's, who gave me an angry face. Um, but <laughs> yeah, you know, I was like, oh, maybe people will pay attention now, now that it's 12 minutes away from me. Like, a stabbing mm-hmm. right in the heart. Yeah. Um, but there's still no attention. Um, what is the mm-hmm. conversation um, with your friends? And are your friends Asian? Or what are the conversations you mm-hmm. are hearing? Yeah. So one of my friends, Tammy, she personally, she personally knew Ian Williams. She had a couple classes with him. And I was like, okay, so what kind of vibe did he give off? And she said, there was something off about him. But he didn't, of course stab other people in class and did outrageous racist things but she said energetically there was something off and then when she said then when she heard about the news she was like oh okay yeah that's exactly what was in the back of my mind instinctively and is your friend Um, tammy is she um asian is she white is she black is she um she's been amazed okay yeah so yeah interesting and then what Mm -hmm. have you talked to your other friends about it yeah, I uh, immediately messaged some of my close friends from VSA and all of them were just so devastated and literally all of them couldn't even do their homework. I couldn't even do my homework either. We were that it hit really close to us because we were all so scared for our lives. And now we're like, we're not going to go out as much. But if we do go out, we have to go out in groups. We have to if we're going to a restaurant or a grocery store, we have to park right in front. We can't park in the back because there's more of a risk for somebody to leash out on us out of the blue. So we've been talking about how to take precautions as um, Asian individuals going out there and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, when people think of Woodenville and Bothell, um, you know, they wouldn't think, you know, because it's a pretty decent income area. Um, but then again, mm-hmm. like this, this is out there and I, I am, I am talking about weapons with other Asians, unfortunately. Um, and yeah. it's just, um, cause I don't have numbers. I hardly have any friends. And then, um, mm-hmm. also to try and coordinate somebody to go walking with me, it's really difficult. So, um, mm-hmm. I have pepper gas and I think I'm going to get a police baton, um, like a mm-hmm. metal police baton. And I, my friend showed me his, his, um, uh, what is it called? Stun gun. And then this other gal, this other Asian show me her stun gun. And, um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've had self-defense. Um, but I think I'm more concerned about a car because I don't actually go mm-hmm. anywhere. I don't, I haven't gone to the grocery store for, I don't know, a month or, or so. And cause I'm not really eating that much, but, but also it's like, <laughs> I don't go anywhere. So I'm more concerned about the car when I go walking, um, mm-hmm or when I did is like always go against the car. So you could see mm-hmm. because in um, where I'm at, which is not far from you, there was a guy um, who went walking and this lady ran, you know, mm-hmm. drove on the shoulder. He had to jump into a ditch. Um, and then my uh, aunt, my aunt was followed. Um, this is my aunt was followed in November um, from my house to her house um, for like mm-hmm. 10 minutes. She had to actually not land at her house because she was still following. And then I had two incidents too. My friend, Chinese friend was also yelled at and he lives right by me. And so I think people don't understand. So um, have you talked to any um, other students who are non-Asian to hear what they think or? Um, I talked to my one white friend, friend, and she was also scared for her life. Not necessarily because, well, she's white, but she yeah. was kind of saying like, it could not just happen to Asians. It can happen to anyone. I guess she has a good point, but, um, I kind of told her that a lot of these crimes that have been happening has been targeted towards a race. And I think she couldn't fully understand that just because she wasn't fully educated in that matter. Yeah. Um, and then our conversation just ended there. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I, um, I know. 
I, I had, I do have um, some good news. I talked earlier mm -hmm. to a high school student and I went to this mm -hmm. listening program where it's in Pennsylvania. It's a public school. Cause I thought, oh, this oh, must okay. be a private school. Cause they have a DEI, a uh, diversity, equity, inclusion um, person. I'm like, what? Uh, so this African-American <laughs> yeah. uh, had this listening group and recruited this uh, student that I spoke to earlier and recruited uh, other Asians and teachers to talk about growing up Asian and um, and what that's like to show the impact. And, and so um, I think that we can do what th this program that they did and also for mm -hmm. college students. Um, and I, I know that not everybody's may feel like Asians may not feel comfortable to speak. I think there will be some like such as yourself, but also we can mm -hmm. hear um, other Asian voices to kind of get the ball rolling. So then your mm -hmm. friend um, who is white was concerned for herself, even though she's not going to be confused um, as an Asian. So then she can start to like get a sense of these are Asians being killed. Um, yeah. So, and, and what... Um, is there any chatter through UW besides the email? Um, honestly, no. Um, I did go to a Filipino American Studies, Student Association meeting that was centered around talking about Asian hate crimes. And that was a really good meeting because each of the FAFSA chairs or the, the officers, yeah. they were explaining they had like corner stations. So our breakout room would rotate to different topics. One was about the Asian model minority myth. One was yep. about historical, uh, historical events that have happened right, yep. in the Asian community. And then uh, political figures that are Asian, like what's her name, Marie something. She's Hawaiian. I think that politician, they were talking yes. about her and other people. Okay. And then um, present crimes have been happening. So it was really nice to hear from um the filipino students at my club because i usually only hear from my Vietnamese friends yeah so it was good to get a different perspective and they talked about their own culture as well so i got to learn a lot about what they went through um so that was really insightful and then um i did do a podcast with some of the vsa officers about asian hate crimes yeah and um they shared their personal experiences about, you know, how their parents migrated from the Vietnam War. And we were talking a lot about the fetishization of Asian women and how we're written off in Hollywood and, and um, overall a really good conversation. And when we also talked about empathy as well and equality and what does that mean in America? And I think that will be coming out this Saturday. Yeah on YouTube. That so. is great. Well, I would yeah. love to see um, all the Asian, you know, CSA, Chinese and the Korean mm -hmm. and, and see if you can connect with BSU, the Black Student Union and, mm -hmm. and start sharing all these voices and then connect to UW, UW, maybe CLU mm -hmm. connect to those, um, those affinity groups and start sharing. And mm -hmm. I think that that, um, that format, that FASA Filipino group, um, Asian group mm -hmm. use is a great format. Um, I, and the Filipino story is never, never told my, my dad and I two years ago went on this Filipino mm -hmm. walk in Chinatown international district oh, wow. to learn mm -hmm. about all these events. We're like, Oh, yeah. you know, cause I've, I, because I'm Japanese and Chinese and we're, we're, mm -hmm. we've been here for so long and we're more, I, I never knew about the Filipino, mm -hmm. um, um, story. So, um, yeah, well, that is exciting. And I'm so proud yeah, of you yeah. all. Um, oh God. So I think though, something to think about is to mm -hmm. ask, um, the, who's the person who sent out the email, the, whoever oh, that authority uh, is, yeah, yeah, is to, mm -hmm. to, a group, you know, get your VSA people together and, and the FOSA group and like do a group email to mm -hmm. the authority person and say, uh, we want, you know, we want to have a, a town hall around this and talk about how we can be mm -hmm. safe. And, um, because mm -hmm. it, this is probably not an isolated incident of a crazy person. This is a person who's mm -hmm. just releasing their hate. And there's more of them, how to, how to deal with it and to show how it impacts you as a Vietnamese American. Mm -hmm. And, and so I think it's important to 
um, to say, we need this. We need to recognize this. And city of Buffalo, hello. How, yeah. You know, how often is there a stabbing in the heart of, of anybody? And, and yeah. so um, I, would, I would start that conversation too. And, and I think this needs to be like really soon. Mm -hmm. Oh man, golly. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm really scared for not only my life, but my friends who are Asian and yeah. they, and if we, cause we are confirmed to go back in person. Um, so in the fall time, so if we have to take safety precautions just to attend school safely and leave school safely, then that's the case. Or I was thinking if I have to go to the higher ups at Utah Bothell and say like, I don't know if I feel comfortable or if my other Asian friends feel comfortable yeah. attending college again, you know, we have the freedom and the right to do so. Um, at yeah. Least. Cause maybe, maybe us... there's, there's like when I, on campus, when I, I went to mm -hmm. the university of Puget Sound and at night, um, you, it's, it's like in the woods and, you know, beautifully landscaped. So you could actually mm -hmm. call to get a security person to escort you to your, mm -hmm. um, to wherever you're going. But um, maybe there should be something set up, but they need to know mm -hmm. that. I mean, were you, were you surprised? Cause I, I kind of wasn't that surprised cause there are so many stabbings cause I'm studying all this. Yeah. So I was kind of surprised a little bit that it was in Bothell um yeah. and at such a ritzy type of area like modern area but I wasn't yeah. that surprised how about you mm. I was very surprised yeah just because you know I don't hear any like murders or cases happening in Winville Bothell they as you said yeah. they have a reputation of being clean cut and like a lot of doctors and lawyers like higher-ups they live here you know and it's considered peaceful in their neighboring cities too and so when I heard that I was like are you serious like that was my first like reaction I was shocked and then I started to sob and cry a lot and and yeah yeah well I'm glad you did that podcast but um definitely mm -hmm. um move, move forward more. And I'm happy yeah. to advise and, and talk with your group because we need some pressure on you to Buffalo. This is a big, big deal. And, and to be that it's mm -hmm. right on the other side of the campus. That is just, um, yeah. Oh. So, okay. Yeah. Well, we will, um, talk soon. Um, mm -hmm. and if your some of your colleagues and also from the FOSA group want to be on camera, mm -hmm. I want to get their voices too to represent and um, and to get their voice out there too because I think that you know everywhere in the states is going through this and nobody knows what to do and people are not used they don't know the impact of what Asians are going through so um, mm -hmm. let them know um, I'm happy to give amplify their voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely talk to some of my friends. Yeah. I think I know one of the officers. Her name is Fiona. So I'll talk to her. Okay, great. And yeah, let's get this rolling. Yeah, thank you.